Welcome to this week's commentary. As you can tell, we're filming from a different location this week. I'm actually in Palm Beach, Florida right now. Been meeting with clients uh, today. Uh, had a lot of client meetings on the East Coast this week and am actually getting ready for a political and economics conference here in Palm Beach uh, over the weekend. So it's a change of scenery for the weekly video, but also a pretty big change in the markets. We had our first three-day successive rally in the markets we've had all year. It's not really saying much, but it's actually pretty impressive uh, relative to how this year, of course, has gone throughout uh, the risk market uh, environment. Um, not a specific catalyst to the move up. Last Thursday, you may recall that the market was down about 400 points near the end of the day and rallied off of that low, still closed down quite a bit, um, a couple hundred points, and then was up big on Friday. Uh, the markets were closed for President's Day on Monday, and then the markets rallied quite a bit Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, today, it was down a little bit, but, but not, not much, mostly flat. Interestingly, from our vantage point, um, MLPs have had an incredible rally uh, in this period of time, and including in today, continuing a big move up in the oil and gas pipelines. Both the broad stock market rally and the MLP movement, um, you could largely credit to the move up in oil prices. They're still sitting around the $31 range, but they're up about 15% um, from where they were just a week ago. And so that correlation between oil and stocks is still very much in effect. Um, China's currency this week, the yuan did appreciate a bit against the dollar. So there, it doesn't really help me much to tell you that part of our um, risk appetite on environment um, is related to the Chinese currency appreciating. Um, although we think that that's a factor, it's hard to say why the Chinese currency was appreciating. So a lot of unknowns out there, not a lot of companies with earnings results this week, nothing gangbusters to report, some good results, some not so good results, but earnings season pretty much is near the end and we know about where it ended. So the, the reality is that um, sentiment was a big indicator. The markets were very much oversold. We think that the impact of negative interest rates from central banks around the world has been terrible. Um, and that the mega fear that existed about a week ago that was getting baked in about potential more bank defaults and so forth subsided to a certain degree. There's been a lot of inside buying from corporate executives and some of the key names um, in the S&P 500, that helped to, to move some stock prices higher. But the reality is that we expect this volatility to continue um, for the foreseeable future, largely because the things driving it, China may, may, continues to be an unknown. When oil prices find some reasonable level of economic equilibrium, definitely an unknown. Um, and then the whole efficacy of central banks. When um, the markets will decide central banks have bullets that they can use that are effective. Markets can rally. When the markets panic that there's uh, no more credibility from central banks. That's why I think things like negative interest rates are such a bad thing for the market. Instead of driving risk assets, they cause the markets to say um, that the central banks really are in a mode of desperation. So deep organic growth is the real need for markets at this time, and we don't see that imminent, and so we think more volatility will be uh, uh, the story, <clears throat> both up and downside volatility on a valuation basis. If we do not go into a recession, overall markets are pretty reasonably priced. Some things may still be a bit frothy, and some things uh, are frankly quite um, attractive at these valuations. We are continuing to nibble in emerging markets, and, and we uh, like this price level as an entry point in our emerging market strategy. Uh, bonds, we're having to be very cautious about interest rates dipped very low. The 10-year at one point had come all the way down to 1.55%. Um, it's moved higher since there, but it's still below 2% on a 10-year Treasury bond. So you have very low interest rates. And, and then the other piece that now we're going to have to start talking about a bit, I've written on it a lot, I have a lot more to say about it, but I think it's a more current uh, conversation in the weeks ahead with the video commentary is the impact from the election. A lot of volatility that will come as long as election matchups look uncertain. And, and to the degree that some greater clarity may be formed over the next month, particularly in the Republican primary, 
it may help, but if there's going to be a long drawn out battle and a lot of uncertainty, perhaps on both sides of the aisle, um, that, that can only cause markets to pause a little bit as well. So uh, all that to say, we're very happy with how we're positioned. We, we say that every week because if we weren't happy with how we were positioned, we would reposition, believe me. But the truth is that we think we've navigated this well so far this year and we're diligently still pursuing the right balance between defensiveness and opportunity. Reach out with any questions. Greetings from Palm Beach, Florida. Look forward to being back with you in Newport Beach next week.